Hello and welcome to this morning's balloon flight with Governor's Balloon Safaris here in the Masai Mara and the Mara Triangle of Kenya. And isn't it just a lovely sight? We are slowly floating over the plains of the Mara Triangle. And what you've got in front of you, just off to the left-hand side there, is a marsh. We're about to cross a marsh. And for those of you who have never been on a balloon before, I'm going to try and describe to you what it's like. You basically float with at the speed of the wind, which means that it's almost deathly quiet. And it's been likened to almost a magic carpet ride. Now, that glow that you saw there, that was the flame. Now, they are very low to the ground here. You can see that topi floating by on the termite mound. That is just above horn height and you've got a one ton basket suspended below i don't know probably a four or five story hot air balloon a couple of feet off of the ground that is the skill of these pilots in the background is the ululolo escarpment a feature in the african rift valley and we are floating over an alluvial plain right now which is on the banks of the mara river which is lying just behind us at the moment now on the edges of this marsh that we are approaching are a whole collection of herbivores. And the reason for that is Kenya at the moment is in a bit of a drought, and the only good grass around is at the edges of these marshy areas, which are still getting a little bit of water and feeding the grass. There we are. That is Angama Mara. That is our sister camp. We are just off to the right of it in a valley. And just look at that view. Not as good as the balloon at the moment because they hop up high, but they definitely have a commanding view over this Mara Triangle and area. Now, that floating by, although the breeze is very gentle outside this morning, it's hardly even moving the branches of the trees around us. You can imagine such a huge balloon actually puts up quite a lot of resistance, and that's why we're floating by at the speed that we're doing. Those pathways that you saw coming and going, those are all hippo trails. There's another one coming through the center of the screen there, and all going into the grasslands from the river behind us. There's another very bold hippo path. Generally speaking, there are double tracks, almost like this road that's coming up, only a little bit closer together. And that's because hippos' bellies are so wide, they can't actually cross their feet over one another, which is what most other animals can do, including models and cattle. There's the marsh. All right, excuse me, I haven't introduced myself this morning. I'm not that topi. My name is Stefan Winterboer. And it's my pleasure this morning to try and bring you a little bit of the peace and tranquility and wonder of this balloon safari. There's Africa's fastest antelope, the topi, and that is a big bull topi weighing in at about 500 pounds and living on the edge of this marsh that you can see. Probably just amazed at the fact that they made it through the night. Over the last couple of days I've watched lion eating topi and I never realized that lion actually ate as many of them as they did, but they do, I tell you. Teaches you a new thing every day. Now you can start seeing the green of this marsh coming through. The marsh gets its water. There we go. That is a hippo path that is flooded. Now the marsh gets its water from the Ululolo escarpment in the, in, the, in the background there through some forests, winding its way down and then spilling out into these flat alluvial plains and obviously dropping its silt. And over the centuries, this silt builds up into a marsh. And you can have a look there. That is now a hippo path. Here we are. One of the birds that is frequenting this marsh. I don't know what that is. To me, it looks like a hammercup bird. Let's see if we can. That brown color is diagnostic. There we go. Hammercup bird. That brown color is diagnostic. And then I just caught a glimpse of that anvil shaped head at the back, or the crest at least, not really the head. It's a crest of feathers that extends off the back of the skull. Sends are just battling there and doing a heroic job on, in a balloon. And, uh, and keeping a tiny little bird, probably about as big as a football, in view. Now we're busy floating over this marsh, as you can see, as you can see very pockmarked from all the footprints of the animals that frequent it. Mainly elephant, buffalo, and hippopotamus make these huge ones, and rhino, of course, as well. We're now coming up to the Mara River. The tall trees that were on our left-hand side that are now behind us... <laughs> Oh, there we go, the other two balloons from Governor's Balloon Safaris. They obviously have multiple balloons, everybody, and, uh, and those are two of the others. There you can see the flame busy filling up the balloons and keeping them aloft. All at different heights. The wind at different heights blows in different directions, and that's how you, that's how you steer a balloon. 
and using all bunches of vents, hot air, wind currents, and a know-how that is, for me, quite magical at the moment. These pilots can almost, with, with a great amount of precision, steer these balloons. It's actually incredible. You'll watch as we come up to these trees right now. The Mara River is just behind those trees. We're now on the edges of this marsh and are coming up to the banks of the world-famous Mara River. Obviously one of the barriers that the Great Migration faces in this part of the world and one that they cover. That there is a dry oxbow lake from the ancient bed of the Mara River. It used to flow here and then the river was in flood and cut off this oxbow and that is all that's left. And it will very soon be covered in vegetation and trees. Here we have some birds. They look like Woolly necked stalks, a pair of woolly necked stalks. Senzo doing a fantastic job on the camera this morning. And look at that, the trees are higher than the basket. That is the precision that these pilots can get. Isn't that just incredible? Doing a wonderful job of keeping those, uh, those birds in view. And as the balloon picks up a little bit of height just to clear the trees, as you can see, not, they float between the trees. And you can almost feel like you can reach out and touch it. That tree that's coming into view on the left-hand side, that is actually just below the basket. These pilots have been doing this. One of the oldest balloon safari operations in the world, and arguably probably the best of them all, at least in my opinion. But I'm very Africa biased. Now we're coming out over the forest. Good place for leopard, good place for black rhino. So keeping our eyes peeled, there's an ancient bed of of the Mara River. The Mara River is off to our left hand side. And you can see that dense vegetation in the top left of the screen. That's where the river meanders through. This whole plain, so basically from the edges of the escarpment off to the right hand side, all the way to where you, we are floating around now, is all just silt deposits that over the centuries have been brought into this area from further north in Kenya. There's an antelope center screen just off to the right. Looks like some Defasa waterbuck. They enjoy these flooded grass areas. They are grass eaters. Now, uh, Marion, you wanted to know if the noise from the balloons accept... Uh, 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 um, um, oof, I've lost my ability to talk uh, English at the moment. Um, bothers the animals. Let me just use that one. <laughs> Excuse me, Marion. Um, no, not really. You do find as you get a bit lower, the size and the swooping motion of these balloons can have a, a bit of an effect on the animals. I mean, they're large, colorful things with a loud, flaming noise that comes out of it. And uh, you do see animals moving apart, but these balloon safaris have been operating on this route every single day for the last couple of decades. And these animals are very used to this balloon. So apart from a, just a general, whoa, what is this? It is, actually, uh, it is actually not noticeable, the effect that we're having on the animals. They calm down and settle down to look at what this thing is. Um, here we've got another animal in the center of the screen there. Coming up, you can see these animals dotted around. It's actually quite difficult to see animals, believe it or not. You've got to have a trained eye. It looks like another Defossa waterbuck. That is it. You can see that white wash on the rump and that distinctive dark gray color. There, Senzo zooming in. Ah, oh, to a herd of elephant. How fantastic. Always with their characteristic, very white tusks. Something that I've found quite astonishing while we're busy uh, As you can see, we, drive, we are flying over this forest. This is actually the best and only way of seeing this Mara River forest. And there you've got just something so fantastic. 
sunrise over the Mara, governor's balloon safaris in the distance. Just absolutely fantastic. The sunrise this morning, golden through those clouds. Had a lot of rain here yesterday. We had a huge storm here in the afternoon. And everything now seems to be washed clean. Dust is out the air. There's a nice fresh smell. And there you can just see the sheer size of these balloons and this forest that we're flying over. Very rare to be able to get into this forest. It's a very, very sensitive forest. Um, and a forest that disappears very quickly when the river changes its course. So although it looks like it's an old forest, this forest grows and dies back and regrows and dies back again quite often. And this is the only way of getting into this forest. We don't do walking safaris in this reserve. We don't drive around in this forest. And it's just such a wonderful place to be. A lot of birds that only occur just in these little thickets and groves. Fantastic home for black rhino, leopard, leaving the hyena and the lion, obviously, to the plains. And there in the background, you can see where the wildebeest are at the moment. <laughs> Sarah, you just mentioned that this is a hot air balloon and a safari combined in one. It's something that you, it's a dream for you. I must agree with you. There, we've got two white-backed vultures sitting in the nest. Let's see if we can see some chicks. Have you got some chicks? No chicks and the vultures off. Obviously couldn't take the size and the proximity. There's the Mara River. You got to see it there. Chocolate brown meandering through the silt. Now, Liz, you wanted to know why we can't traverse the forest? Liz, basically, it's just such a sensitive place, and it's so limited. It basically stops at the hills that you see in the background. You can actually see where the forest stops. And so the conservation in this area is around this forest, and to try and preserve its trees, its birds, and its animal life, roads have a tendency to drain these areas. And, of course, we don't want to do any more damage uh, to these forests than is absolutely necessary in trying to uncover them. There you can see the Mara River, some hippo off to the right hand side, or those rocks, looks like some rocks, oopsie, might be some hippo, hoping that it's hippo, save my reputation here a little bit. <laughs> you can see how that river cuts through the sand, and obviously in years of high rainfall, the river will change its course, and there through the trees, that bare patch that you can see in the trees just disappearing off the right hand side, that's where the river used to go, here's another bare patch here where the river used to go. You can see how long it takes these. There you can see the depression off to the left-hand side where the river used to go, one of the ancient beds. And you can see how long it's taken the trees to regrow. They haven't even. Here backwards you can see that sunrise again. Now fully up. Really a fantastic view. James, you'd like to know what brings the black rhino out into the open occasionally considering that they are browsers? That's a very good question there, James. Primarily it's because black rhino are nocturnal. And so under the cover of darkness, black rhino will leave the cover of the forest in search of morsels and tidbits that grow on the plains. And there is there's some hippo there, James. I'll get back to your question now. There's hippo. That's a hippo pod, a raft of hippo. Just lying up on their beaches, they would have gotten back in under the cover of darkness. And there's twin jets of water spurting out of the noses of those hippo. There you can see how thick that mud is. And now we go back into the forest. Give me a chance to answer James's question. On the open plains, James, is what is considered a delicacy for black rhino. It's a woolly caper bush. And the rhino will leave the comforts of their forest and move out onto the open plains to go and browse on the woolly caper bush, one of their absolute favorites. They also sometimes come onto the escarpment. There's a much broader and wider selection of trees, and they will enjoy the very diet that that offers them before spending most of their day in these thickets and forests alongside the river. Here we're coming over this river again. You just look at those steep banks. To give you an idea of how dry it is at the moment, the water should be at the level of these banks. That is how dry it is right now. Can you believe it, hey? That just puts it into perspective. Another hippo just going out of the screen bottom right. Oh, just look at that in the open plains in the middle. And you wanted to know if the herds of wildebeest have arrived yet. And yes, in the top left of your screen behind those hills, now just disappearing and 
the other group of wildebeest off on the horizon, right in the background there, are coming up through a, a spit of land called the Lamai Wedge. So we've got two wildebeest herds converging on this area. They generally and typically only come into this area around about the end of July, beginning of August. This year is a little bit drier and we're hoping to see them a little bit before, uh, before August, but it's not uncommon for them to only come into this area a bit later on in the season. Right now, they're off to the left-hand side of the screen, off east of where we are floating around now on this balloon, and not too far away, about 6 to 10 miles away. There you can see a flooded oxbow, and there's a very good example of, a, of an oxbow lake. So, flooded oxbow, that's where the river used to run. Flood, flood goes across the gap, and all of a sudden, it is cut off, and the river has a new course. And this river will meander there in the background, just in the middle of your screen, above middle, you can see an old river course. And from the hills in the background all the way to the Ululolo Escarpment, which we'll see, uh, well, it's behind us now, is, uh, is where this river will change its course. And there in the mountains, off in the distance, is where the Mara River starts. And now you can see the forest thinning out. And although quite extensive, we've been floating over it for a good 20 minutes, 30 minutes, at a, a relatively good Lick of speed, it is coming to an end. You can see it there against the distance. That is where the crossings are. And these fantastic shots that we get out of the crossing cameras that we've installed. Just look at that bank, layer upon layer of silt. The deposition bank and the undercut bank. There you can see. Now, Jason, you wanted to know who are on the other balloons. Jason, they are guests of the various camps in, the, in this area. There must be a dozen or so camps in this area. All have guests, and the guests will come and float over the, over the savannah uh, on balloon safaris almost every single day. There's a pod of hippo, a mighty pod of hippo, I dare say. Look at that. Wow. I don't even know how many is there, but there's a good 20 hippo there. Now coming over these delicious grass plains. That's what the hippo will be eating at night time. They come out of the river under cover of darkness and they will eat grass for most of the night returning to their pools in the darkness around about 4 o'clock in the morning, half past 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Velma, you wanted to know where the Mara River starts and ends. Velma, it drains a fairly large area, um, not, not massively, probably about 200 miles or so north of the Mara Triangle itself, all along these Ululolo escarpment and features, high features along this valley. Um, and it drains into Lake Victoria another 200 miles or so, maybe not as much as that, maybe 150 miles or so uh, further west of this position. So from here the river goes south a little bit and then branches out in a westerly direction and drains into the enormous Lake Victoria with its banks. There we go. So on the other side of those hills is where the river will turn from south. All the, oh, there we go, an elephant shaking his head. Male elephants tend to have an initial aggressive reaction to the balloons. And you watch this male at the back. He's a young male. Their trunk up. That is an elephant questing for scent and is usually one of the very first signs that an elephant's being inquisitive. His partner, of course, having seen balloons lots, doesn't really care much about that. And you might find that this elephant shakes his head. Ah. So he's a new visitor here. He's come to visit his friend and hasn't seen a balloon yet. Turn around, ears open, listening, listening, trunk up. There you can see that. They can just hear and see. Elephants obviously have their eyes turned towards the tip of their trunk. So for them to lift their head up and see this balloon, it requires a bit of effort. There, the trunk goes up, just smelling, listening. You can see we're quite far away, having no major effect on these animals. Apart from general curiosity, I would say. And you can see the grass now thinning out. You can see as we move further away from the river, the grass cover becomes more and more sparse. But funnily enough, it reacts incredibly well to rain. We had a lot of rain last night. The grass will green up now, and then the sun will bake it again over the next course of days until the next rainfall falls. But the grass here 
reacts very, very well to rain cover. And that is what the wildebeest come out of the Serengeti all the way south in Tanzania for. They come into the Masai Mara because the grass cover is better seasonally. Oh, look at that. Very close together, those balloons. That's lovely. These pilots, of course, super, super skilled. I've flown now in these balloons a couple of times, and every single time I marvel at how they get to judge, finally judge, how much to add hot air, what effect it has, how quickly they can go up and come down. Janine, you say it's so beautiful, you love the view of the other balloons. I must agree with you. And just look at that sun touching the edges of the clouds with that silver color. Oh, that is just fantastic. Really a bucket list activity for those of you who enjoy uh, African savannas and flying of any sort. And we're just so happy that we can bring you just a taste of what it's like through these Facebook Live episodes, I would say. There you can see the animal paths now, all leading towards the river. All paths lead to water. Water equals life in Africa. Where you have water, you have life. Ah, oh, there we go, our first zebra trotting out over the plain. These are zebra that are sedentary. In other words, they live all year here. They don't migrate away. There are a lot of zebra, about 250,000 zebra. They join the one and a half million wildebeest or so that come into this area. And there you can see what they come for, the grass cover. And it gets thicker as you go south. There's the Ululolo escarpment. On the back end of that, a couple of hundred miles away, probably about 150 miles away, lies Lake Victoria. What is that? That is a black-backed jackal. Here we've got a jackal sensor doing a wonderful uh, job of capturing this tiny canid, probably be about as big as a Jack Russell, a large Jack Russell. And you can see how fantastic a feat that was. Blackback jackal just returning from its night's foraging. An omnivore, <clears throat> an opportunist more than an omnivore, let's just say. Very clever, cunning little carnivore. And... Uh, will take almost anything. And when times are tough on the meat side, they'll quite easily go and eat vegetables and leaves and fruit with a high protein content. Many pathways through here. Ah, one of our viewers, Anne, is coming to join us on the 4th of August, coming to this area. And you say, Anne, you've already booked your balloon safari. I'm happy, Anne. Pack in a hat. The, if it doesn't get cold, that flame that shoots out of there is enough to give you a bit of a sunburn. Oh, we got some just below that balloon. Just, there we go. You've got some secretary birds. Look at that, a pair of secretary birds just disappearing out of the shot there. Lucky enough to catch a secretary bird from a balloon. Just look how low we are at the moment, folks. That is a balloon the size of a building that's floating a couple of feet off of this grass plane. When you're on it... You can hear the crickets and grasshoppers on the grass. You can see them moving about. You can hear the birds scurrying out of the way of the balloons. There you can see they've just dropped down over the trees, and you can see how low we actually get. Uncanny, these pilots. I must be honest with you. Initially, you want to try and push away, and, but they really do their job well. Now, Beck, you've just said, where do you go, Senzo? I must be honest with you. Oh, there, Senzo has got those two secretary birds again. Some topi in the background. Quite rare to see these birds. Not so rare in this particular area, but they're snake catchers, basically, striding out on their long legs, hunting predominantly snakes. A little topi as well. And you can see us floating around. Now, as they get a bit lower, the wind speed next to the ground actually picks up a little bit. And you can see that they'll pick up speed as they go around. Here we've got... To Olga buzzards, I want to say. No, Marshall eagles. <clears throat> that, or black breasted snake eagles, excuse me. So, black breasted snake eagles, a pair of them on top of the trees, excuse me, I just went through all my birds with a brown head and a white belly over there and ended up settling on the black breasted snake eagle. And then we've got some Thompson's gazelles striding out over the plains. Dainty little antelope. Just, just bigger than that uh, jackal we saw a little bit earlier. So about knee height. 
the most beautiful faces, to be quite honest with you. And there you've got these hippo paths striding out into the grassland. Hippo would have been coming out on their pathways. They don't have the best eyesight, so they use these pathways quite often. They will then filter out into the grasslands, eat, and come back on the same way. And there you can see these pathways that the vehicles use to drive through this area. Dina, you're going to be in Juma on the 5th of August. Good for you, Dina. I'm unfortunately going to miss you. I'm going to be in and out there from uh, in the... No, no, I'll be there. I'll be there on the 5th of August. Hopefully we'll see each other there. Dina. I'm there from the 1st until the 15th. So please come down and visit Safari Live. And uh, we'll show you what we do behind the scenes over there and bring you this magic that we're doing at the moment. Now you can see the plane stretching out. We've left the river behind us. And what we can expect, you can see a little Thompson's gazelle there. You do get rhino out here. The clumps of bushes that you're seeing, those are predominantly the woolly caper bush that we were talking about a little bit earlier that the black rhino love to favor. And, of course, this is what the wildebeest are coming for. You can see the rain last night having left a nice green tinge on this grassland. You can actually see where the rain was and where it wasn't. Have a look in the distance. That was where the rain didn't fall yesterday how is that for amazing so the rain fell where we floating over now didn't fall against the escarpment and that is why you're having those green color changes and there we've got some forests i've been running the last couple of days in those forests on the escarpment it's beautiful inside there lots of elephant come up in the evenings hippopotamus come up in the evenings and feed on the trees and the very diet on the edges of the escarpment. Now the balloon has picked up some height. It's amazing how quickly they do it. If you think, just a couple of seconds ago, we were actually floating at almost grass level. And now look how high we are. There's the Mara River with its forest thinning out. A tributary coming in, joining the river. And then the river goes around the back end of those hills in the center of the screen. And goes all the way around. This is a little bit of a plateau. There you can see those dark splotches in the background. That are, those are called Inselbergs, and on the back end of those Inselbergs is a valley that the Mara River then leaves the Mara Triangle, going to Lake Victoria. John, it is amazing how quickly the grass turns green. I must agree with you there. Obviously, there's topographical influences as well. Um, hollows and depressions will hold rain a little bit easier than what... Um, uh, raised areas would and so you do get concentrations of green areas but generally speaking rain equals life equals green and that is just the way of it quite often when we get rain coming in from the side that you're looking at that is looking west to where Lake Victoria is almost all of the rain in this area comes from Lake Victoria being such a massive expanse of water, the evaporation causes lots of moisture in the air and the wind direction blows that rain and that moisture over this area. And there you can see almost the entirety of the Mara Triangle now. These two balloons still in concert with one another. That is just amazing. All filled with hot air, rising there as quickly as they can. Look how quickly that balloon rises getting some height up so you can give people a bird's eye view hanging in this basket. And still dead quiet. You're floating around. Another herd of elephant. Wonderful. And some zebra. Wow, look at the tusks on that female. Generally speaking, the females in this area have got beautiful tusks. I must be honest with you. Much prettier for me than the tusked cows of the Kruger Park. And it's because the elephant cows here eat m a majority of grass. They don't use their thinner tusks to pry open as many trees and as much bark as they do in the Kruger Park. And so their tusks stay beautiful for longer. Generally, in the Kruger Park, the tusked elephants have to pry open barks and sticks for a majority of the year. And that breaks their tusks. Look at the zebra. Striking. Never fails to amaze me. So these zebra would be the forerunners of a group of zebra that moves into this area ahead of the wildebeest. They crossed in here about two weeks ago. Probably a couple of, I don't know, a couple of tens of thousand. I saw a definite increase in zebra, a couple of thousand zebra over the last two or three weeks or so. David, 
I think I copied your name right there. David, you just wanted to know... Oh, Gilbert, excuse me. Gilbert, you wanted to know how far the balloons can travel? Gilbert, it, it would be a function of wind speed and how much gas they've got in their, in their tanks. Um, I, I would imagine that a balloon could stay afloat for a very long time if, there were, if, the, if the balloon pilots didn't go up and down all the time and got themselves into a fairly stable patch of air and was moving at a, at a rate of knots. If the wind speed was quite good, I can imagine that a balloon could cover a couple of hundred miles in a day. I don't know what the furthest uh, a balloon has ever traveled in a day on, say, two propane tanks or whatever they use to, to uh, give that flame. Um, but it's substantial. You can cover ground at a rate of knots. We've been traveling now for roughly 35 to 40 minutes or so, but I've done the same journey in a balloon at 70 knots. We did it in 20 minutes at 70 knots, and it'll take an hour to drive back to where the balloon um, started. And so it gives you a bit of perspective there. I'm not sure how to put it into real-world terms there. I have a bit of a warped sense of uh, distance and calibration. I tend to do it in game drive units. So um, you've got some eland. Wonderful to see. Africa's largest antelope. Wow. Look how healthy they're looking. That is about as big as a moose. Well over 2,000 pounds worth of antelope. And they're also coming into this area for the wonderful rich grasslands that the rain and the river has combined to bring you. Oh, just a fantastic experience. Jan, you've made a comment that you love watching all these wonderful animals in this habitat, and thank you very much for bringing this to you. Jan, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, we're very happy to share this with you, and we're very happy to bring it to you and to expose you to this. Um, and we hope that we're just going to be getting more and more exposure like this to you all over the world, you and others, many others around the world, and share almost every day, we hope, that we can bring you a balloon safari and basically show you the story of this place unfold through the seasons, through the week, through the months, through the seasons, and through the years. And we can see what changes happen. I'm very excited to have started this journey with you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to immensely seeing what we learn, what we experience. Obviously, as we learn a little bit more about this whole thing, we'll get better. At least certainly I'll get a little bit better at telling you what's happening from a seasonal point of view. You can see four balloons up in the sky, including the one that we're in at the moment. That's five balloons in this particular area. I counted nine balloons the other day. It's a very popular way of floating over the plains. Obviously so unobtrusive it doesn't even I mean it's, it has no impact on the ground whatsoever a truly spectacular way of experiencing this Here you can see what's left over from when the river moves on you can see that the river gives way to these grasslands fed by an equatorial sun and lots of rain the grasslands here are dominated by climax species of grass Thermida and Aristida predominantly with the meter being the primary grass that is eaten by all of these animals, the meter triandra, a climax species of grass, very, very good nutrition wise. And that is why the animals are looking so healthy here. Anna, you wanted to know how high the escarpment is. Anna, I'm not too sure exactly now. Um, it, what it is in feet, I can't remember for the life of me, but it's probably about ooh, 300 feet or so above the, above the plains, about 100 meters or so above the plains. It's a, it's a distance. It's a fairly big escarpment. From, even from where I'm sitting at the moment, I have a very commanding view over almost our entire traverse area, and I know that the horizon lies about 40 kilometers from where I'm standing at the moment. You can imagine if... At sea level, you have a 22-mile horizon. Right up where I am now, I have a 40-kilometer horizon, so probably about 30 miles or so. You can imagine how high we are. It's lovely up here. There's another huge bird flying off of that tree in the distance. Looked like another secretary bird. They tend to sit on the tops of these scraggly bushes and trees. 
<clears throat> it's these trees that give us those iconic pictures when you join our safaris later on in the day. We have uh, a zebra or an elephant, grassland, a massive sky. You can see now how much that, how big that sky is getting. This is one of the things in Africa is you have these massive skies. And that view there just giving it some perspective. Huge escarpment, beautiful open plain, and then of course this massive sky. All right, we're coming into land now, and so this is the end of our balloon safari. So thank you very, very much for joining us on today's balloon safaris with Governor's Balloon Safaris and Safari Live. We're looking forward to catching you on all the other channels that we have. And uh, until tomorrow or the next day, look after yourselves wherever you are. Have a fantastic day.